Hello then, welcome to this Pandas challenge, day 16 of 30. My name is Valentine and I'll be your instructor. In this challenge, we're going to continue our journey of learning about um, different Pandas concepts and practicing them um, with the idea that we should be ready to apply them for data manipulation, data cleaning, or even data analysis. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is to visit the description link of this video. Click on the practice resource link that should take you to a page like what you're seeing on your screen. Once you get here, you need to click on the sample practice resource, the link that you see here, and then that should take you to a notebook that looks like what you're seeing on your screen. And when you get here, um, save a copy of this notebook by going to file save a copy in drive it should open a copy of this notebook in a new tab and then close this old um, this notebook you can use now the new copy i won't be making any changes to mine i won't demonstrate that because i don't want a copy um, but because you're the learner you can um, take undertake that step i'll be using a practice notebook instead so you can pause the video just do that visit the practice resource link in the um, video description and then um, unpause the video once you've saved a copy. So once you get to your sample notebook, the copy, um, this the practice notebook that you're seeing on your screen is similar to actually what you have. The only thing is that this practice notebook has more challenges and um, if you want to learn or if you want to practice more again with the challenges, you could always become an Afterwork member and you can always get all these resources. So once you get here, um, we'll go to the first section and import the pandas library. So we'll just run anyway, just import that. Um, and initially it takes a few seconds, but I had already connected my notebook to Google server, so it should be okay. So once you've clicked on that and um, everything has run accordingly, then we can get started. The first concept that we're going to be learning about is how to encode categorical variables with an encoder ordinary encoder. So this is one of the techniques that we can use to transform or to change the values that we have in a data set um, to um, a numerical representation. So for example, if we had this data set that you're going to see here, this is the data set and we had some categorical variables like what you have here, customer name, product, category, total price, payment method, and shipping address. We might want to convert the um, values for those columns, those categorical variables to numerical representation. So for example, we might want to have electronics be represented by a, numer numeric or a numeral value or numerical value like one or two or three. So we can apply ordinal and we can apply encoding techniques. They're different than encoding techniques, but if you want to use a technique that replaces what you have here, but takes into account some order, by an order it could be that maybe um, maybe one of the values here, um, having it maybe having a lower value like like zero or one or two than other values which have high would have higher values would mean something. Like for example, you can have a categorical variable that contains um, um, ho um, temperature, and the categorical the values that would be there would be um, would be low, medium, high. So if you want to convert that into um, uh, if you want to use ordinary encoder, that would take into account that um, low values ought to have lower numerical values, like zero, etc. All right, so let's get to learn how to convert some of the, um, just two, we'll just convert two for learning um, purposes, just two of these categorical variables to, to numerical representations using um, the Arduino encoder. So we can define the two columns that we want in a list and then we import the Arduino encoder from sklearn. Um, then we um, create an object of the Arduino encoder and we use the function um, or the method from the Arduino encoder to um, transform those columns that we've defined um, and then we can then decide to actually replace. We replace the output of that transformation to contain now the new values um, representation, the ones that um, the new categorical value variables that have um, the numerical representations that we want. We store that in the original data frames and then um, the data frame columns, and then we display the encoded data set. So 
um, for product category and payment method product category and payment method you can see we have numerical representations all right pause the video and then work on the challenge in some cases when we are performing data cleaning we might want to convert the values of columns to lowercase so for example customer name product name these values that we have in here we might want to convert them to lowercase so we can use the string method um, called lower or the string function it's called um, lower um, we apply it to the column that we want so here we were applying it to the um, customer name column and to reference the string function we use it from the module the string module as shown here and we apply that to all the different columns that we want and then replace the original values with the new values which have been transformed and yeah that's it basically so you can see we have lowercase um, values all right pause the video and then work on the challenge in some cases, we might want to maybe rank the records that we have based on some sort of other, some sort of column. Maybe we had total price as the column that we would want to use to rank the um, um, the products. Maybe we wanted to rank them from most expensive to least expensive. Then, um, in such a situation where we want to rank high values first. Um, then we would need to, uh, we, we normally say that we would be ranking in descending order. So in our case, if we wanted to rank the records that we have in this data set using the total price column, but having the records with the highest values have um, higher rank values, let's say the first one that um, contains the highest total value, um, or greatest total value would be ranked one, then the second one would be ranked two, then we can use the rank function, um, which we apply to the column that we want to use to rank the, the, uh, the records. And inside that rank function, we define how we want to rank. So we want to rank the records in ascending, in descending order. So we set the ascending parameter to false. If it were to be in ascending order where the um, records which have lower values are, are ranked first, then we would need to change this to true. So we do this and we create a new column that contains the rank values. So after applying now the rank function to the total price column, we get a new column called um, rank. And then we can be able to sort the values by the rank column to be able to see um, those records. And then we preview the data set after ranking. So you can see here on the far right, um, here we have 0 0.2. But on the far right, it's ranked as the first one. Um, we have um, 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 coming next, but they have been ranked um, to have 2.5 and 2.5 because they share some sort of ties. Um, we have covered the how to work with ties, how to define them um, in a way that you would want in a past um, challenge, actually in two challenges in the past. We will hopefully revisit that um, in future um, workshops but at this particular time um, pause the video and then work on the challenge in some cases we might want to bring two columns together so assuming that we had maybe a column called um, brand and model and we wanted to bring them together to form one column um, we can use the con or the cut cut um, it's called the cut method it's for it's a string method or the cut function it's um, from the string mod module just as we did with the, the lower function so what we need to do is first of all define the first column that we want to um, use for concatenation and then we use um, the function we apply this uh, the cut function to that column and then we define the column that we want to concatenate you could have multiple columns and define that as a list but we'll showcase that in another session and then we define the separator that's the value that will separate the values two values once they've been joined and we replace the actually we create a new column called brand model or the with or the column name with the respective uh, appropriate column name and we would now um, you know, once we've concatenated um, those values, we can then decide to, um, you know, have them in a new column. And that's what we do here. So in the far right, you should see brand model and with the new column names, uh, with the new column values. So the two, the two values have been 
concatenated, one for brand and also one for model. Pause the video and then work on the challenge. In some cases, we might want to search for or filter for records that contain or that begin with or end with certain words. So for example, if we had this data set that we are going to see here and we wanted to filter for those records where maybe a certain column starts with maybe um um you know you have product name and and it starts with maybe laptop uh, it could be laptop case it could be just laptop as such it could be laptop bag it could be um laptop um i don't know maybe desk or something of that sort um then we can decide to use now the stats with function it's like what we used we used, we used a previous um string functions or methods um such as um the one that we used lower we also in the have used the cut in the previous um e example concept so here we are using starts with and we're defining the um, characters that we want to know that um, starts with that and and from that we we and, and you know from this particular bit it's like we are defining our condition we're using now um boolean indexing approach so once we define our condition we pass it to df the data frame itself, the, the tabular structure that contains our data. And this essentially filters for our data and we store that in laptop products. This is what we can, like, you know, you have two records which have, which start with laptop. Um, and you can play around with even uh, maybe removing top. Um, you'll see maybe the records that have that. So we can still seal that, see that. Um, just as we did here for starts with, we can also check for um, uh, records that have values in a certain column that end with certain characters or text. Like, you know, you can see here Wilson, um, and we can be able, if we check for that, we are going to get just quite a large number of records, but the customer name uh, are different, So, but they all end with the same, um, the same, 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 same words. All right, pause the video and then work on the challenge. Um, when it comes to performing filtering, which is a powerful technique for helping us just focus on, um, as you know, our research area in a, with a particular set subset of groups. So we might want to perform maybe complex um, filtering um, techniques because of maybe the nature of the research questions that we have. Um, in cases maybe where we might want to perform. Um, we want to check whether certain values exist within a column and also have other multiple conditions, other more conditions. Then we can use um, the lock method plus also using the easing um, method as well as um, having some sort of Boolean mask. So, for example, let me reload this data set. If we wanted to check for records which have a region, um, say the region would be east or west, then here we can decide to use the is-in um, function to be able to retrieve those records. But if you wanted to also, again, in addition to those conditions, those two conditions of having the records having values for east and west um, in terms of regions, or um, and, and also having also um, quantity greater than two, then we can use a Boolean mask still using boolean indexing approach so in our not not boolean indexing here we can use just the lock method so um but again you can also use boolean indexing if you want um so instead of having lock we would just have square brackets but we would define both multiple conditions just as we would um when we close them in 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 some sort of um in parentheses that's the first the second condition the first condition and um, we want to check for both so we use a number cent and we have now like a bigger mask um, so this is our first mask um, then we have another one but now we combine them to have now some sort of boolean mask um, and then pass that boolean mask to the lock method which of course would now perform our filtering based on the conditions that we have um, have 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 um, in our case so here we're going to get those records that satisfy those two conditions that we, we've set there so these are the records. Pause the video and then work on the challenge. In some other cases, um, we might want to iterate over those 
um, rows. Maybe in our case here, we might want to iterate all the over all these records and perform some sort of advanced, um, um, com like maybe some operation. So, for example, if we had this data set, we which you're seeing over here, we could decide to iterate over um, these records. Um, but um, something to note, these are just a few, um, but you know, uh, we can use now the Python fundamentals um, concepts such as a for loop to do that. So we would define the variable that will contain the current item that is being iterated on, then sales data dot eta tuples would retrieve actually the records that we have, but in a in a tuple format. So here we are using slightly a different approach and even the way we are accessing those records here, it's slightly different. So here we are using um, eta tuples, which will just sort of get all those records as a collection of tuples, um, which is a Python data structure. Then how we access now the different columns value, the column values, we use indices um, and and store the output inside the the um the variables as shown um you'll note that these positions that we define here um will be somewhat uh, different from what you would say like so for the first column you would just use just one second column two three um if you want the index you could try um zero that's that's what you would get um and then we just print out what we have for each iteration all right so i think i think that that should um give us a good idea so you could always just explore just modifying and playing around with what we have um wait just a minute i think there's an issue here actually i had let me correct myself um this is supposed to be index zero um then this is one then two, three. Actually, so the first column starts from index zero, not index one. Sorry for that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you run this, you should be able to see that um, you have the correct data in the output. All right, um, pause the video and then work on the challenge. Um, so going back again to filtering, so um, we got to learn how again to combine easing and work with the lock method. Um, but again, when it comes to filtering, there are many techniques. Um, uh, this is just revisiting and repracticing what we have already been exposed to when it comes to filtering with pandas. So we can load our data as shown here, and then we can decide to filter for records, which um, we can use. And when we decide to do that, we can use the query method to perform that filtering process. And that query method can take multiple approach, multiple conditions. Like this is the first condition, this is the second condition, and then we can use some keyword that um, or operator that would. Um, define what we want like in our case we want to select records that have both conditions um it's true if it's um if it's if it's if it's um not true you can just use or uh, not true yeah not 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 true if it's um um if it's either one conditions should turn out to be true then you can just use or but here we're going to just use and and um yeah filter for that data All right pause the video and then work on the challenge Filtering with between functions. So in some cases, you might want to filter for data um, which have values that are between a certain range. So maybe filtering for records which have quantity between um, 300 and 400, um, you know, um, then we can use the between um, function, which we can use to define where our low um, value in that range would be and our high uh, or maximum value in that range range would be um, so essentially we can use the between function to um, specify our condition um, as shown here so we just apply it to the column that we want and um, yeah we pass that to sales data and we get our outcome here all right pause the video and then work on the challenge 
lastly um which we already have gotten to have done so we can still use again um, just as part of practice multiple conditions with the lock method not necessarily having them similar here there are similar um, conditions which you know here we just have two different um, um, conditions uh, and um, we just pass them to the lock method and that's what we get this is just for practice i think this we've covered in the past right pause the video and then work on the challenge all right so that's it with regards to this learning experience i hope you found value and are getting better and better each and every time we go through these exercises um i hope maybe in some future exercises you might be able to just quickly go through these um, challenges without even just referencing the videos um yeah and you can always give yourself maybe that kind of a um a challenge for yourself when you're getting these 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 challenges all right all the best in your learning journey if you found this video valuable be sure to give it a thumbs up it helps to tell us that um, you are able to find it valuable and you should continue creating such um, learning experiences and it also tells others that um, they should um, um, go through the resource and, and if you do want to be informed when we post such future learning experiences be sure to subscribe so that we you're informed when we post such learning experiences all right so that's it with regards to this learning journey all the best and um, see you in the next challenge bye bye